Hello everyone. Today we're going to have a quick look at Humanify, which is a one-click shader for Blender, specifically for the Genesis 9 figure. So the idea is that you get one-click results uh, really quickly out of the box and it costs you 39 bucks currently. You can get it from humanify.com or you can also go and get it from the Blender market, which is where I got it from. It was a little puzzling for me to get started, but I'll show you how it works. It's very nicely explained. There's a couple of videos here, but I thought I'll give you my take on it. And here's how I use it with Blender 4.1.1. So I'm going to go and clear out my scene in Blender, press X and just open up the end tab here where I've got my DAS to Blender bridge in here. So I've prepared a character earlier in DAS Studio, namely Cheyenne here. There she is. And I've already sent her over with files sent to DAS to Blender. And um, that's that's all I did here. Skeletal Mesh. She's already in there and I can go and bring her in just by clicking on import new Genesis figure. So this, of course, requires that the DAS to Blender bridge is installed. So I'm assuming it is installed. Let me go get rid of the timeline here because we don't really need that. And uh, the first thing I want to do is get rid of the bone overlay here. And just because we all want to be on the same page, I'm going to go and create a really fast three point lighting setup here. So this original light I'm going to go and get rid of and I'm going to press seven on the numpad and create myself a single point light here. G, I'm going to move that sort of over here and on the lighting tab here, let me get out of the way. I'm going to go and turn this to 100 watt and I'm going to make the radius maybe 20 centimeters. And that is that. So this I'm going to go and put somewhat higher. So G, Z, just put that somewhere just above her head. G, shift Z slightly further away. And I'm going to go and duplicate that over here. Shift D and that goes over here. I could also really switch on my viewport shading here so I can see what we're doing. Let those shaders compile it for a second. And this one here, that's going to be a fill light. So that's going to be 50% of that. Now when I make one last copy of this light here, Shift D and put that sort of towards her back, somewhere like this. And that sort of gets us a bit of a lighting setup that we can only really see when we switch this over into the viewport shading. Let's do that. And that doesn't look too bad. It might be a little bit bright. So this one goes away. G shift Z a little bit further away. This one G shift Z sort of to over here. And I think that's that's pretty that's pretty palatable out of the box. I wanted us to be on the same page here before I even go into Humanify. Let me go into view and switch this, the focal length over to about 100 millimeters. So we don't see these geometric distortions there. One last thing, I want to go and create myself a camera. And then one last thing with the camera selected, I'll head over to view, align view, align active camera to view. And then we've got something like that. So that's perfect. I'm going to go and click this box here, camera to view. And then whatever I do with my viewport is aligned here. So I want to go and have a little close up of the head because that's what we'll focus on. Oh yeah, one other thing with the camera selected, I'm going to go and put the focal length also to 100 millimeters and then I'll go and position that like so. There we go. So this is our viewport lighting. Oh, one last thing, because Blender is just so easy and straightforward. Under the render tab, I'll enable ambient occlusion and screen space reflections, of course. And I might also increase the viewport samples to about 64 so that we can see this a little bit better. So now we see what the figure looks like when I bring her over directly from DAS Studio. And what Humanify brings to the party is literally photorealism out of the box. So let's go over to that tab here, Humanify. I would imagine you have installed it already. It's just a regular add-on. You go under Edit Preferences and add this as an add-on. Give it a little bit of time though as you install it because it's a large download. It's about three to four gigabytes. And uh, that just takes a while if you, the moment you upload that through Blender. Blender hasn't crashed. You just need to give it a couple of minutes for it to you know, do its thing there. So here comes the thing now. You, you're greeted with this with these four tabs here, head, body, arms, and legs. And those are, of course, correspondent to the UV tiles of the main Genesis figure. What this will do is apply the material for each of these tiles independently to the figure that's in the viewport if it is in fact selected. So let's do that. Select the figure and then select one of the UV tiles like head. And then if you click this icon here, you get a flat menu of a particular shader you want to apply to the figure. So you've got three women right now, Vero, Ekaterina and Micah with Anna and Raiko coming soon. And we have three men, Mario, Jose and Gabriel, who's also coming soon. Let's go and use Micah perhaps. So select her, that changes the shader, then you hit apply and then it takes a moment for the shaders to recompile and then we see something like this. 
Now notice that you only have applied this to the face. You haven't applied anything to the rest of the body. This is something that we have to do manually. And I wish in an updated version, there'll be something like a one click solution for the whole body because I have to go over to the body now and then select the other body. So not Vero, it's Mica in this case. So I'm going to have to select that, hit apply, and then, you know, the body is applied. Let me go and do the same thing for the arms and the legs. So Mica or whatever other person you want to apply here, legs, select that and select that. So a one click shader would literally be like select all. Maybe that's even possible. Can I do that? No. <laughs> I, if, if so, I don't know. I don't know how maybe there is maybe there is a way to do that, but I currently don't know how to do that. Anyway, so this is now our shader applied and you'll see that the first thing you'll see that's different from the DAS shader is that the bump detail or the normal detail is a little bit stronger than what we had in the default shader that comes over. So we can change that. And that, of course, happens on the shading tab. In fact, let me go and grab another tab out of here press N, switch this over to the shader editor and show you how to get to that shader and how to, in fact, make adjustments. Make that nice and large here and go and move that over here. So first thing, we need to go and find the surface property that we want to adjust. So that is up here. These are all the surfaces on my object. I have like 40 million and I'm going to go and type in mica at the bottom here. So I'm going to go and filter this out. Let me go and start with the head because that's what we're seeing. And as soon as that appears, hit full stop on the numpad and then that brings that into focus. If you're not too familiar with Blender's shader nodes, this here means, this green thing means that this is a group. So that means there's more going on. And groups always mean that you often have nicer, easier adjustments to get going here. So I can go and have a fiddle with my roughness detail here. So if I hold down shift on my keyboard and then move the slider up and down and you can see how I can make adjustments here. Maybe that is a little bit too oily. So 0.5 in the roughness might be a little better than specular. That's sort of the size of the highlights. They're bigger or smaller. I think 0.8 was a good uh, medium here. Scatter. This is something that you'll probably see in the transition to the hair here. If I go and click on scatter, you'll see what happens to the transparency. There's something where the samples need a little bit of catching up. And also there's limits applied on this group here, so I can't go above 0.5. And then uh, the saturation as well. Saturation is how saturated this particular shader is. Look at where the saturation doesn't kick in. So this is literally how much color is in that texture here. One works quite fine. And finally, we have the detail. So 0.3 is the 0.003 is the default, but you can make it stronger or less strong if you want to do that. So the reason why that is important is it'll really depend on how far away the figure is from the camera for this to make sense. If you have a close up the person like this, then you probably want to have a slightly lower detail like this. That looks quite nice. But the moment you have something like a further away type render, full body render, then your bump detail might be might need to be a little bit higher so that it reads for the viewers. So that's the principle. That's really how you fiddle with it. But the trouble sort of I find is that if I've made my adjustments here on the head and I'll go and take that down a little bit like to this and I wanted to have that particular adjustment here now on the rest of my body, I'm going to have to basically remember what I've done here, and then apply it to all the other surfaces of my figure. So once again, I have to go and uh, look and then make a note of these values and put this to the arms and the body and the legs. And I wish there was like a one click solution, but hey, maybe we're going to get that in the future. So it's just one of those things that I wish just uh, to bring this too close. If you hover over the shader tab, control space, and that goes into full screen mode. If you hover over this group and press tab, then you'll see what's going on under the hood. So there's a lot of stuff that you can adjust, add to, dissect and have a look what you would do differently. This is, of course, where the textures are plugged in. So if you wanted to have a fiddle with that or export them into other applications, you can. But really, the strength of this thing is to make it a more or less one click solution for good renders and for good photorealism inside of Blender out of the box. There's only one other thing that I wanted to bring to your attention on the Humanify tab here. There's this thing at the bottom, this little drop down menu, which currently says none. And that isn't anything that has to do with the shader. That is just something that is sort of like tone mapping in the DAS Studio viewport. This changes the uh, render or more importantly, more, more accurately uh, down here on the render tab in Blender. 
you scroll down, you have the color management and under AGX, you have the look option here. And that is exactly what that set. So you can do this from here, but this gives you a convenient shortcut to, you know, try out different looks for your character. And I think this is meant so that you can, without having to play around with lights too much, you can just get a basic impression of what your character would look like under different lighting circumstances. So if you find that helpful, take a look at it. There's a link in the description of this video, both to Blender Market and to getyoumodified.com. I'm sure this is going to be improved over time. This is currently version 1.0 that I'm having a look at in the, at the beginning of May 2024. And I'll post some renders over on my ArtStation page as soon as I've had a look at all these skin settings here. And I'm also looking forward to the other characters that are coming out. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've learned a lot and you get a lot out of Humanify. I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.